Welcome in and welcome back. I wanted to uh, stop in with another video for the quotes series here on this channel last week. If you remember, on the seventh day of the new year, we stopped in with a little bit of uh, help from the warmest and fuzziest and cuddliest philosopher. I'm speaking, of course, about Friedrich, 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 Friedrich Nietzsche. Um, of course, these were quotes for the new year and quotes which might be helpful, at least uh, I think there are quotes which might be helpful heading into the new year. And now we're going to take a trip into the darker, colder side of philosophy. I'm speaking, of course, here of the Stoics. We have a quote here from Marcus Aurelius where you have to start whenever you decide to start with the Stoics and a quote, of course, from Seneca. The quote from Marcus Aurelius is as such, you have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this, and you will find strength. And from Seneca we get, hang on to your youthful enthusiasms. You will be able to use them better when you are older. Now, I thought that these might be particularly useful quotes early in the season. We are here in the 14th day of 2023. I thought that these might be useful quotes going into a new year because much of the new year, many people talk about resolutions in the new year. I prefer to talk about goals because I think that goals are something that can evolve. Goals are often something that are forward-looking as opposed to resolutions, which are often prohibitive. Prohibitive Thinking prohibitively rarely holds power over the soul. I want to stop drinking. I want to stop smoking. Versus the goals, I want to get in shape. I want to be able to, what is a goal that might be related to stopping smoking? I want to be able to climb a set of stairs without getting winded. I want to be able to hold my breath for four minutes. Any of these types of things that seem sort of arbitrary but are forward-looking, um, now, that first quote there, you have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this, and you will find strength. It sounds a little bit like a quote that would be sort of nihilistic. You can't control anything except your mind. But that is not at all, I think, how it is uh, to be interpreted, how it is to be used by the individual. I think that, that quote is to be used by the individual in the following manner. Um, things are going to go wrong. And you can't control the things that go wrong, but you can control how you react to them. You can control... So, I'm a big believer, I'll say it again, in goal setting. And for so a little way in which this can go wrong, you can pick your goals and you can pick your friends but you can't pick your friend's goals. So, oftentimes, for example, the New Year's resolution to get in shape will come with a gym buddy. Three days in, your gym buddy might decide to poop out. You don't have control over that, but you have control over whether or not you drag your sorry ass to the gym anyway. And it is incumbent on you. It is incumbent upon you to go back to the gym anyway. There will be, if you have, for example, like I do, goals on YouTube. I want to hit a thousand subscribers on this channel this year. That is not in my control. That is outside of my control. What is under my control is, unlike last year where I stopped making videos in March, April-ish, I can keep making videos. I can get my sorry ass back to the computer and record videos. I can sit down in this chair and record videos. Things will go wrong. You can't control that, but you can, re you can control how you respond, and you can control when you stop reacting and get back to acting. I can control when I get back to acting. Um, one thing that popped up in my last year, as a big believer in goal setting, 
I set monetary goals too. I want to be able to earn X amount of money this year. It is not quick at my scale to earn money on YouTube. This channel makes no money at all. Strip Cover Lit makes a little bit of money. But a sure fireplace where I can make money is at my job. When I go to my job, I get paid for the hours I'm there. Those are conflicting interests. Those are conflicting goals. I want to hit a thousand subscribers. I have to make content. I want to earn X number of dollars this year. I have to go to work. When those things conflict, I have to pick one of them. Uh, a lot last year. And when I say a lot, I mean a lot last year. I picked work. So my salary is X. What I ended up making last year was X times 1.5. I made half of a year's salary in overtime last year. It's a lot of work. It is no excuse, however, that I did that instead of making content. I could have done both. There were times where I was sitting at my apartment getting little done. This year, I plan on doing both. And I have to realize, I have to realize that it is under my control where to put my focus. And I have to use that to find the strength and execute. Um, another way that I think that this is an applicable, an applicable quote for goal setting and an applicable quote for finding the forward path in your goal setting, a, an applicable quote for choosing what you're doing with your time is to be able to recognize opportunities when they come up. In these financial goals that I have set for myself, I also have goals as far as investing is concerned. It is important to be disciplined in this regard. So, for example, I might want more shares of Tesla. But, if Microsoft is on sale, probably I should make that investment instead. This year, it looks like we're going to have a lot of sales. Um, so maybe I should prioritize that work stuff again. Anyway, uh, that is how I believe the first quote, you have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this and you will find strength can be worked into uh, game planning, goal setting for an entire year. Now, the second quote here, hang on to your youthful enthusiasms. You will be able to use them better when you are older. Yeah, man. Yeah. I consider myself a writer. It's one of my, my passions in life. One of, my, one of the things that I am truly passionate about in life is pen-to-paper writing. And when I was younger, I had a lot of exuberance. I had a lot of piss and vinegar built up. But I had very little discipline, and I had much less to actually write about than I do at this point in life. Work experience, heartbreak, failing at things, succeeding at things, all of those things are uh, fuel and fodder that build up over time. Um It would, it would have been easy by this point in my life to have given all that up. Very easy. Very few writers are quote-unquote successful in a generic sense, in the sort of um, nomenclature sense, right? In, in, in the way that people normally think about what it means to be successful. Very few writers are successful in that sense. If I had not developed my own idea of what success means as far as writing is concerned. If I had not done that, I would have been disheartened so, so long ago. But I didn't, I didn't do that. And here I am, older and better able to incorporate the ideas and experiences that I have built through life into the pin-to-pad writing. 
Um, as far as yearly goals are concerned, I think that this is important in the following way. Again, going back to that first quote, things are going to go wrong this year. Things are going to pop up this year. I think for me, and and you're going to fall off. I fall off on goals all the time. So say you want to, for example, write 12 short stories in a year. That comes down to one short story a month. But uh, for the Dece- the January, February, March period, you don't write any complete short stories. You've fallen off. You were behind pace as far as your goals are concerned. Um, I think to me what this quote says on a micro strategy level as far as, for example, yearly goals are concerned is don't forget the way you felt when you set the goals. You might fall off with your progress, but don't forget the enthusiasm with which you set those goals. Don't forget the exuberance with which you went to that goal-setting process and you envisioned the person you wanted to be, you envisioned the ways you wanted to change, and you fell behind a little bit. Because three January, February, March, I don't write any short stories. My goal was 12, I don't write any. Say, after that, I only pick up at half pace. At half pace with those remaining nine months, I only end up writing three and a half, four short stories. Those four short stories with which I finished the year are many more short stories than I would have had I ended up quitting. This is an important part of the goal-setting process. This is an important part of the progress process, at least as far as I'm concerned. That is what I have for this, the second video in the quotes series that I have going on this channel. I am not sure what I will be back with next week. I have the Daily Stoic series I'm going to continue. I have the Leonardo da Vinci book with which I will continue. It's always possible that I will pop up with a movie review. Uh, Right now, I am trying to pace myself and stick to one video per week. Uh, I am also making two videos per week on strip cover lit. I'm working the full time. I'm working basically a part time and trying to get back in shape and working on my goals. So um, I appreciate that you are here with me and I hope to see you in the next video.